And we're back, with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to be, well, we're going to be feeding this tree. Uh, first though, we need to make ourselves some space and get ourselves access to some resources. So we're going to core out a bunch of this map. And the game seems to be running a bit faster today. Maybe it's my imagination, but I think the most recent update has actually improved performance. Which means we might get a lot more done today than I was anticipating. Well, let's, let's see how quickly we can core this area out. We have made a few changes about the place. We've made a giant water tank down here. Well, not so giant. A small, diminutive water tank right there. Uh, over this section, we're removing all of this water from under the tree. We're going to need that because this thing spits out resin. Uh, at the same time, we're going to want to deconstruct a bunch of this junk. And we're going to want to core out this whole area. We've also put an exosuit forge here. Oh, God. Why did you go that direction? Guys, guys, don't walk in front of the Whomping Willow. Just stay. You know what we need to do? We need to deconstruct those tiles there. That way you can't walk across them anymore, see? No, no, don't stand on the tile where it can hit you. Fine, get hit. See if I care. Okay, maybe a little bit too close. You know what? Let's uh, let's take all of that stuff out as well over here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get off the, get off the ladder. Yeah, I'm glad you're so happy about not dying. That's, uh, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> if they had have uh, deconstructed that below them, they wouldn't be able to get off the ladder and I'm... Mm. Yep, that was uh, that was the exact thing I was afraid would happen. That's um, just genius. Why did you stand on it before you deconstructed, you muppet? You must you, you must be feeling so happy with yourself, Chief. Just so happy with yourself. Oh wait, no. You, yeah. No. Just stay there. Do not move. Do not move. You're still getting hit. I think. Are you? Get out of there, you. Just just go. Go. There. Okay. Okay. Now, if I deconstruct this, are you are you guys going to teleport up there again? Because if you do, if you do, I swear to God, I'm going to leave you there. I won't rescue you next time. Right? There's only so much stupidity that's allowed before eventually it's like, you know what? You deserve it. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Let me just finish getting rid of the last of this water so that we can uh, clear this area. I'd like to turn this into a vacuum if at all possible because we're, we need to feed food to this thing. And... I think food in a vacuum would be better. I don't know how long it takes them to eat everything and surrounded by polluted oxygen, that food might not last too long. From what I have been able to determine, what we need to do is feed this tree by dropping food right there on that tile. And if we drop food there, this thing will eat it and then spit us out resin. However, we do need to get the food in and I want to get all that polluted oxygen out. And we also need a, a way to pump out the resin, which is why that liquid pump is there. So I think we'll remove the roof here and then once the roof is gone, we can, well, all that gas should escape into the vacuum. It'll take a few minutes, but we've got a little bit of time to waste. With the roof removed, all of that polluted oxygen can get sucked out slowly into the vacuum of space. It'll take a few minutes. But while we're waiting for that, let's get a few other things done on the side. Namely, how are we going to get the food into this? I think we're going to have to ship it from our home planet. Our home planet is absolutely swimming in food. How many calories? Yeah, we got 26 million calories back here. I think we take all the barbecue. We got about 10 million calories of barbecue, and we feed it to this tree. Not sure... Who's trapped? Who's trapped and how do they trap themselves? That does not look like you're trapped. Uh, what? Maybe it was something to do with the atmosphere ducks. Doesn't matter. We've still got plenty of oxalate going around. We've still got plenty of calories inside each rocket. I think we'll be good for a little while longer to uh, finish off what we want to do here. As well as that, we might want to turn this entire place into a giant farm. So honestly, the amount of time it would take to take to make 10 million calories, I'm not so sure. And we've also got a bunch of sand here. We might want to start cleaning the oxygen. We don't need to, but I kind of would like to. So I think we'll take this out as well while we're here. The reason we want to dig down here for the sand is so that we can put it into the deodorizers that will convert all this polluted oxygen into clean oxygen. And we might as well get to digging while we're here. Oh, actually, you know what? I think we'll leave that. We'll leave that there because this water tank might end up getting extended. I think I'm going to want to pump that water from over there in there. Also, I'm eyeing up a couple of tungsten volcanoes down here. We could definitely do it more tungsten back home. And we're going to have to ship back the iso resin, so shipping back the tungsten shouldn't be any much more complicated. Hopefully. Now, let me finish this off. A little bit of elbow grease, and we're moving all of that water out of there, dumping it into our central tank. That's going to smother that buddy bud, unfortunately, but that's fine. You know what? We'll dig that up and we can uh, plant it over here. I'm going to try and get rid of all the slime lung germs, because that's just way too much slime lung germ. I know it's not affecting us because we're in suits, but at the same time, that's got to go. 
Oh, why is there... You know what? Let's see if we can get Rose out of there. We seem to be able to walk underneath the rocket platforms again. Previously, we were not able... Like, once these platforms were down, you couldn't walk through this area, which was kind of annoying, but now that they've let us through there again, yes, that makes things so much simpler. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking lots and lots of deodorizers everywhere across this map. And we're going to use the gold amalgam wire off of this little transformer because, well, we didn't bring enough uh, refined metal to be running conductive wire everywhere. I think that might be enough deodorizers to at least get us started. Though, yeah, let's maybe mop up the polluted water. There's so much junk lying around this map. And at some point, we'll have to sweep things up. Just, just not quite yet. First thing I would like to try is I want to try feeding this tree some uh, bam lilies. I don't think bam it can eat bam lilies, but, you know, I'd like to try. At least uh, give it a go and see what it does. Uh, at the same time, we might want to get some reed fiber as well. Let's see, bam lilies. No, no, seems like it does not have a taste for bam lilies. As far as, I as far as I've been informed, it needs calories. So that means even pinch of pepper nuts wouldn't do either. Hmm. I say we fire over some barbecue. Yeah. Uh, how, what are we down to in here? 13? Yeah, we're almost there. So let's go back home. And let's put ourselves together a little launcher. Where we put the launcher, though, uh, is going to be another thing. If we go over, where is it? Over here. How is this looking? We have, we've been dumping all of this nuclear waste in here. And how is this looking? 1,655 rads, 1,646 rads. It's just, these nuclear reactors, they produce rads, but not nearly as much as you can get by just compressing nuclear waste down. Compressing nuclear waste is just, you're so encouraged to do it now because this, these things just don't do enough and plus you'd have to squeeze it in here and somehow get it out or fire the bolts diagonally it'd be really painful this is just a really simple way to get lots and lots and lots of rads also if you put the i suppose you could put the the rad bolt generator in there but you'd need way more space i'm not sure that would work quite as efficiently but anyway let's see about maybe turning these off What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, let's, uh, let's discontinue these and we'll put ourselves a launcher somewhere. I'm thinking probably at the end here. All we did here was we chucked in an interplanetary launcher on the end. Now, this thing is level with these uh, Diamond Press's input port for the Rad Bolts. Of course, it'd take way too long to charge all of these, even with the ridiculous amount of radiation we've got. I mean, what, that's 1,700 Rads per cycle? It, it would still take forever to fill these. So we've disabled a bunch of them, and that means the rad bolt, the next rad bolt through here should immediately, or charge that fully. At that point, we can start launching food, probably a whole bunch of barbecue, back to our, uh, back to the section with the tree on it. I don't want to send over all our barbecue at once. That's, that's 10 million calories of barbecue. If we mess up, that would be, that would be painful to lose that much barbecue all at once. I'm not going to lie. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have this refrigerator here, and we're going to stock this one up with barbecue, just 10 kilos. And then we're going to chuck that into the interplanetary launcher. And then if those 10 kilos work out, then we can send more, depending on how things eh, play out on the, the far side. Down here, we're going to set this to 10 kilos of barbecue. And that should mean, yeah, that fills it up. And then we'll shrink that down to zero. Okay, so that is set to level seven. If we go up here and we instead set this one to level eight, that means they should come along and... Yeah, they're going to move all the barbecue to this thing. And they shouldn't refill it because, well, if you look back at the other one, it's now set to zero. Right, so once the 10 kilos are in there, we throw it into the conveyor loader, which sends it into the interplanetary launcher. Uh, that's set to maximum 200 kilos. Yeah, so that won't launch immediately. We're going to have to decrease that. And is that all of it? That is 10 kilos. Oh, it's not deep frozen, though. That's, that's fine. Then we'll just go over here and we'll set this to nine. Come on. Done. Now you, you should not be exchanging heat with the contents and... Where the... How did you drop that? Well, okay, so it turns out I hadn't got the rail finished, but before I could get it finished, the barbecue rotted. We just lost 10 kilos of barbecue. That was, um... Ow. Well, never mind, we've still got 10 million calories. Let's, let's go launch some more barbecue. One moment. We have 10 kilos of barbecue loaded up. It's at 1% freshness. Will this maintain its freshness in flight? I have no idea. Uh, let's change this to 10 kilos so that we can launch it. Or 9 kilos? Why won't you launch? So, a few things I've learned about launching barbecue. One, the moment you put barbecue into the fridge, its temperature starts going up to 2 degrees if it's below it. So, if you want to keep it uh, to keep it chill, you're going to want to disable the refrigerators or unplug the refrigerators, which we're going to do. Two, when the stuff goes into the uh, launcher, you have to have the mass set before it hits 10 kilos. For example, if you put in, if you have this set to 200 kilos 
and then you put in 190 and you're like, oh, I'll just lower it down to 190. No, it won't activate until something else enters the machine. So I had to lower this to 10 kilos and then put in 10 kilos of barbecue. Uh, that 10 kilos of barbecue has now been launched. I have no idea what's going to... I think that's going to go off before it gets there. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that'll crash out the game, but that's going to be uh, that's going to be an odd one. And what is that? Defensive Sol 3? I don't have a third rocket. Is the game freaking out? I, I don't know. Anyway, there is our interplanetary payload. There is our stale 2% barbecue. Damn it. Okay, I think we're going to launch a little bit more barbecue next round. This may not work. We're down to 0% freshness. And it's only showing up as refrigerated. But it is technically in a sterile atmosphere while it's sealed inside whatever these bullet type things are. Yeah, I don't think it's going to make it. Looks like we're going to be launching more barbecue. You know what? We'll, we'll see what it comes down as, though. I, I wonder what happens if it turns into polluted dirt inside one of these bullet shells. And gone. Right, so is that just going to land and be nothing? That's... Okay, now I'm just actually extremely curious what happens when that hits. You are a shell full of... Nothing. Okay, the game's got a lot of stuff covered. Gotta give it to it. I, I was worried that would crash out. Yeah. Crack it open, and we got nothing. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go launch some more barbecue. I think this time we'll go with 50 kilos. Our second effort is much better. We've actually got it deep frozen, so it's still at, uh, below minus 18. And that way those 48 kilos of barbecue are not going to go off before they arrive. It just seems you have to add a bit more mass so that the temperature wouldn't drop as much. And that should work. And once we get it to the other side, it'll be in vacuum. So hopefully it won't exchange much temperature. I should maybe put down a few insulated tiles around the section. Yeah. Yeah, insulated tiles before they show up. Why not? I believe our bullet is incoming at any moment. There we go. It's ready to unpack. Does not seem to exchange temperature when it's inside the little bullet thing, which is excellent for us. And go on. Crank it open. <laughs> All this to feed a tree. And how hungry is the tree? Okay, that is uh, that is just precious. It's actually just cramming it into its mouth. Okay, and then it's just dumping out resin. Excellent. So it turns barbecue into resin. Oh, you might want to eat that. And uh, what's it that? Still? Oh, actually no. We're in a vacuum, and it's deep frozen. You're fine. Damn, it does chow down a fair bit though. How much barbecue we got left after two mouthfuls from this thing? It, it's all gone. Like, two mouthfuls? And it ate 50 kilos of barbecue? Oh, uh, let me do some counting up here. We look to have about, well, almost 100 kilos of resin here. I don't know if it does this by body weight or by calories. So it might just be the more mass you feed it, the more it produces. That would make things simpler, I suppose. Anyway, let's send over some more barbecue. If this thing can go through 50 kilos that quickly, I think it can handle 200 pretty handily. Here we go with about 200 kilos of barbecue. Okay. That thing goes through the food at an absolutely ferocious rate, though. We've got... Is that rotten barbecue? God damn it. That's gonna... Let's see if this rotten barbecue in there is going to give off a... polluted oxygen. Though it doesn't seem to have done so so far. How much rotten barbecue is there? 12.44? I don't know, maybe the game's bugged out on it. We're going to have to do some more playing around, but 32.9 kilos is all that's left. This thing is just a monster for the amount of food it consumes. And then we still got to figure out what we're going to do with this resin. Okay, this resin, as far as I'm aware, we have to boil this resin and it gives us isoresin. Yep, you boil it and it uh, separates it into steam and resin? Hmm. Solidifies me. Use for the production of isoresin. Okay, okay. All we have to do is take this uh, resin and send it back to our home planet. That way it'd be easy to boil. We could boil it here, but that's just way too much effort. <laughs> I love the way it just sort of like crams it into its mouth with its tree arms. All right, this time let's watch in slow motion as it just shovels that barbecue into its mouth like a hungry, hungry tree. Come on. <laughs> okay. You don't even have a mouth there. Where does it go? Clay, I don't know why you designed the game this way, but I love it. <laughs> Right, I am going to send over 10 million calories worth of barbecue. Once all that barbecue has been consumed by the tree, we're going to ship back all this resin and see how much we get out of it. I've been advised that you don't get much out of this resin. Um, but 10 million calories, that's got to gain us something, right? Well, a few things we have learned about this tree. One, it consumes about 100,000 calories per mouthful. Uh, those 100,000 calories translate to about 50 kilos of isoresin that it spits out. 
and it won't actually spit out the icy resin until it's hit 50 kilos or more of icy resin. Uh, the icy resin stacks up to, or the resin, it's not icy resin, sorry. The resin stacks up to 919 to 920 kilos before it breaks into a new tile. Good to know. And uh, we managed to feed it pretty much all the barbecue, though 500 calories or 500,000 calories did go off and turn into polluted whatever. So that's uh, that's why there's a little bit of polluted oxygen floating around in here. Uh, you know what? That polluted dirt should probably not be there. Get rid of all of that. And yes, that was fine. So next up, we want to launch all of that resin back home. For launching that resin back home, I'm thinking we're going to need a rad volt generator. Uh, we only need to launch back, actually, and I think about it, that's many, many tons. This is going to take several rounds. Though I do want to see with the new changes, can we fire a rad bolt through the base of the rocket platform? Because if we could, that would be very useful. <laughs> it would just make uh, fueling your rockets and doing all sorts of things much simpler. We just got to get a little bit ourselves, ourselves a little bit more battery storage. Uh, the problem is we only have sort of a two kilowatts to work with unless we want to put in a very heavy wire spine and I'm I'm not bothered doing that. In fact, we have way more solar than we need. Look at this. These are like 340 uh, watts per solar panel. Plus the solar panels we've got here. Plus it's all on a conductive wire. So it can only go up to two kilowatts. Anyway, we are going to dump a bunch of water in here. We're going to use that as a sort of a, a medium to contain the radiation that comes off this rocket. Do a few launches and landings to generate ourselves some rad bolts. And then we're going to ship all that resin home. Now, yes, we could reconfigure the rockets and put in a tank of liquid and ship it all back that way. But where's the fun in that? I think we're all set to try charging this sucker up. Let's just launch this into space. We're going to change that to crude change and we're just going to launch it into orbit and back we'll make that a bit of a, a round trip for now and begin launch sequence come on all crew boarded give me a minute there we go now that should charge that sucker up how's our radiation looking yep yep i think our radiation is looking good Perfect, we got about 1,600. That should charge up quite nicely. And then the sucker can land again. Oh, God. 2,900. That should definitely give us enough charge. Now what I want to do is basically put a cannon up here to launch the stuff back. I think we're going to have to put a rad bolt reflector up here. So it'll pass through here, then go up to the section, then we can bounce it across to the gun. While we're trying to build this up, I should maybe put on some automation onto this. Uh, otherwise, this thing is just going to start firing like crazy, and I'm worried that it might clip one of our duplicates while they're, you know, going in and out of the door of their house. So, a little bit of automation, just a tiny scooch of that should uh, hopefully help out in that regards. Uh, how's this looking? Okay, that's about to fire in any second now. 470, like, don't, don't stand above it when it's about to go off. Uh, you, Chief Multi-Hat, you're moving. That's good. Smart plan. Okay, boom. Did it charge that? Yeah, it did actually charge the engine. Perfect, so that does work. It passes through the, the base of the rocket platform now. That's going to make charging rockets so much easier. Yeah, right. we'll, uh, we'll stick a rad bolt reflector up there, and we'll, I'm curious to see if the rocket can launch while the rad bolt reflector is there. I don't think that'll count as a building that blocks it. Uh, maybe, maybe, we'll find out anyway. Uh, let's uh, let everyone out, and let's uh, let everyone get back to work. We've got a, a lot of resin to ship home. The devs have also decided to make nuclear waste look sort of more appropriate. This is what I think of when you, you know, you're mopping up nuclear waste is, you know, disgusting filthy barrels of the stuff glowing green. Oh, I think they, I think they did it nicely out there. Uh, uh, over here, we've got this thing charged up. It's time to start firing this stuff back home, though. Oh, we're going to have to do another filtration system back there. We're going to have to filter out the resin. Oh, one moment. It's just, uh, if you look back home, we have up there in the top. Oh my god, the water has gotten high. Oh wow, this... W I put this in here. I was going to put in a transit tube crossing when the water was down to about there. And then... This happened. <laughs> That is so much water. Oh wow, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to seal up this place as well. Uh, yeah, that can go. I'll, I'll seal that up in a minute. That's where I was gonna dump the fish in. Damn. Okay, over here. The liquids that come out of here, they come down here. They get filtered, and then I suppose we're gonna have to filter them again. Hmm. Plan is very, very, very simple. Uh, this here filters out all the clean water and dumps it into our clean water tank. Anything that's not clean water gets dumped over here because all we're expecting at the moment is salt water or hot water. You know, just basically liquids that are all going to get filtered into the clean water tank one way or another. So all of those will still get dumped down. But if any resin comes falling out of the sky, we'll send that resin over here. Oh, wrong keys. We'll send that resin over here and dump it into this section here. 
which is a uh, pitcher pump. We're just going to leave it on the, with the pitcher pump for now, but we're going to have to take all that resin and boil it up. But I've got a quick plan to take care of that once we've got it inbound. And it'll take a little bit of duplicant labor, but I, I'm really not running pipes to where I want to process this. Yes, that looks like a perfectly normal, sane piping schematic right there. Yep, yep. I should probably delete those ones in the middle, but you know what? Considering the amount of stuff we're going to end up sending back here long term. Yeah, there's there's no point. Who is trapped? Uh, and how are you trapped? No, you can... Yeah, I think they still have a little bit of confusion that that's their living quarters. Uh, this thing is just about ready to go. We just need to change where it's going to target, which will be come on the way back home. Uh, yeah, 200 kilos of mass. That is perfect. We are going to turn this to below. And there we go. We can start shipping the resin back to our home planet. This was a little bit tricky, not gonna lie. These trees are a little bit of a pain. Uh, hopefully this gets us enough resin to do something substantial. But from what I'm hearing, this will not be a very good day. Uh, dun, 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 okay, you're filling up. You should be launching back in five, four, three, two, one, and fire. Okay, we'll probably want to give you another zap of uh, rad bolts. Oh, yeah, we maybe left. There's 358 rad bolts left over. Never mind. It's gone. We should have more than enough to ship this all back. Let's go back home and uh, let's have a little go through how we're going to turn this resin into something useful. Here comes that payload now. Let's make sure that we didn't mess this up because yeah, we could have. Oh, I put some uh, roofs on top of this place just because I thought it'd be nice if the dudes didn't have to worry about bullets landing on top of their head while they're using the equipment. I'm not a complete monster. Also, it shields them from the sun as well, so they don't get, they're not as likely to get uh, sunstroke, where is it? Yeah, yeah, see? It's a nice, pleasant working environment. People complain about the working conditions for my duplicates all the time. It's like, no, no, they got, they got a nice life. They're safe from bullets landing on their head. Though that noise of it hitting this roof must be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, there we go. It's definitely not water, so it's filtered out there, and it's definitely resin so it should get filtered out here yeah there we go perfect nice that will give us all our resin now there's just a couple more things we have to do we have to take all this resin and move it and we have to boil it up that's the thing you need to boil the resin before it's any use to you uh, it turns into steam and resin i don't know what the exact percentages are but we're about to find out in a minute what we're going to do is well we could dump it in here but i think the simpler thing would be to dump it over here and we'll go give us a bottle empty here in fact, let's uh, get rid of that ladder and we can put in a third one. I even put in some diamond here so that we can be assured that this will uh, boil as quickly as possible. The plan is, well, completely simple. We're just going to tell the tubes to carry the resin over here. We're going to enable auto bottle and they'll just dump it in this section. We could have run pipes across. We really could have, but it's just a case of there's a lot of pipes between here and there and distance to cover and it just, we would have had to build them all. You know what? There's not that much of it to, to do. Like 600 kilos per run, they'll have this done in no time at all. It's just faster. I know it's lazier, but, you know, I, I'm okay with that. All right, now let's see what happens when this resin... Yep, there we go. There's our first contestant. They're carrying 600 kilos of resin over. And they're going to dump it right in here. There we go. And that is... Ice resin. Okay, so that's 200 kilos per bottle emptier. Let's see how much ice resin that gives us, because that's 600 kilos of resin. Well, according to this, 23.8 kilos of ice resin. That's for 600 kilos of resin liquid. What the hell? Uh, okay, they're moving it all down here to our, uh, what you want to call it, our uh, rare resource selection. That's terrifying. I need to work out the numbers on that because that's that's an absolute minuscule amount for the amount of food we invested in that. That's just terrifying. Oh my god. Well, here comes some more ice resin. Once this uh, first batch is, is dropped off, I have to just run the numbers on this because calorie-wise, I think this is going to hurt a lot. According to the wiki, we're supposed to get 25% of the mass back as ice resin, but we didn't. For 600 kilos, we got barely any. So when we did it a second time with just 200 kilos, we got most of the mass. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're just going to do this one bottle at a time. I think there was some sort of mass override problem there, and that's that's a problem. This stuff is expensive. Oh my god! Even at only 25, even at 25 percent of the mass, if you get it out of it, that's what for every 100 kilos of resin, you get 25 kilos of uh, moisture resin. 
And to get 100 kilos of resin, you need, oh, 200,000 calories. So 200,000 calories will get you 25 kilos of, of ISO resin. That's, that's not a lot. What will that, that actually buy us? Well, this is turning out to be a little bit difficult to figure out. So what we've got here is we have one bottle of resin right beside us. We're going to have this as sweep only. And we are going to grab this 198.8, so let's say 199 kilos of isoresin, and see exactly how much, well, see how exactly how much isoresin the resin gives us. We're going to not sweep any of that, so it will remain behind, and we'll find out precisely how much resin this gives us. Here comes Zachary Zeno now. Okay, just chuck that in there. 199 kilos. We should know quite shortly exactly how much isoresin it gives us. That is 32.25 kilos of isoresin. That's actually a 16% con uh, conversion rate as opposed to the 25 on the wiki. I don't know if it's because we're doing it this way. Maybe we need to make a, like, turn a full tile instead of, like, droplets at a time. Uh, God damn it. Are, are we wasting isoresin by doing it this way? Hmm. Let me, let me come up with a plan. This is a very, very, very dumb plan. But what we're going to do is we're going to take... 100 and was it 89 kilos of resin don't uh, don't ask me why it's 189 uh, 189 kilos of resin and we're going to heat it up diagonally with this temp shift tile and um, that should oh well that didn't go so good yep now we're just we're dripping resin everywhere Where, where's that resin even going uh that resin is <sighs> never mind let me come up with another plan our newest newest plan which is what this is attempt three at doing this Right, we're going to use a few things. One, this is going to get the icy resin or the resin dumped in here. This is going to go through this liquid me liquid meter valve, and we're only going to let through 100 kilos. Once 100 kilos has gone through, this will shut off. Then it's going to get metered down to one kilo per pipe segment, which means it will not boil in the pipes. Then it's going to go through here and get dropped off one kilo at a time. And we're going to see exactly how much iso resin we get for all of that. Uh, and also, I'll have to drop this back on the ground again. I, I swept up all the other ice resin that was lying about the place. And that should give us, hopefully, an accurate idea. Comes Sean Bjog now. There we go. I'm actually kind of curious how this, this works. I haven't used this before. How does it count? Okay. That goes up like that. Once 100 kilos is through, we that thing will shut itself off automatically and we will know exactly how much ice resin we got. Uh, five, seven, fifty. That seems much, much more accurate. It's going up in 250 gram increments. Hmm. We might want to avoid using bottle emptiers in the future. This seems like a much safer way of doing things. Yeah, we'll find out. Once all the 100 kilos are in, we should have 25 kilos of ice resin right there. 23 and a half, 24, 25. Exactly 25 kilos. Right. That makes things much simpler. We'll just uh, delete this lit... This metric valve we don't need that anymore and we'll just connect those two up that should allow us to boil the liquid that way that seems to be a much more efficient way of doing it note to anyone out there if you're using bottle emptiers it seems the conversion rate is absolutely horrific don't use bottle emptiers to boil it you're gonna have to send it through in pipes meter it out to one kilo that seems to be the best way to do it is from what i can tell that way you actually get the 25 percent out of it oh okay now we can turn back on our storage of the stuff down here and we can go through what it's actually worth to you because this is incredibly expensive stuff. Incredibly expensive. Let's just put it in viscogel terms. For those of you who are unfamiliar, viscogel is used as late game liquid locks. They allow you to seal off areas with a, a gel that you can stack multiple tiles high to cut areas off. We're doing it over here. It takes about 200 kilos of the liquid to seal in an area. Well, about 120 will do you if you want to really skimp. And you're probably going to want to skimp in the future because this has gotten expensive. Oh my god. Just doing a, a quick run of the numbers here. To make one viscogel liquid lock, assuming you use 100 kilos per tile, which is what you normally do, it will cost you 560,000 calories. 560,000 calories to make one liquid lock. Also, if you want to make one, enough insulation to make one insulated pipe segment out of insulation, the kind of stuff you use for late game um, hydrogen and oxygen production, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen production, to build one of them, wash one, one insulated tile, one insulated pipe made of insulation, 480,000 calories. Yeah, 
480,000 calories. Or to put that in perspective, if we were to take all 16.8 million calories we currently have, feed it to the tree, refine the resin, do all the works, we would be able to afford a grand total of 35 insulated pipe segments. That's it. 35. Uh, let's put that in perspective. Let's just say we do a little dig thing across here. There. We could build an insulated pipe that long if we converted all of our food into resin. Literally 16.8 million calories would buy you this much insulated piping. Wow. Like, think of how much we're going to have to scale up food production if you want any insulation at all. This is ridiculous. I, 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 I oh, damn. I, I really feel like we should be doing more today, but I've sort of just run out of time, probably because of all that faffing about. Uh, do remember, if you are working with resin, do not, I repeat, do not try and boil it out of a bottle emptier. Just, just don't. The loss of mass is incredible. You'll get about 4% return instead of the 25% you're supposed to be getting, or, well, 5% tops. You really do want to, well, uh, this is the method I found that works. Maybe there's other methods that are good. If you've got methods that are simpler than this, and uh, just, just list them in the comments, I'll, I'll stick them in the description if people are interested. But yes, be incredibly careful with your resin. It is just so expensive. Oh my god, I think we're going to have to just make a whole farming section to produce hundreds of thousands of calories, just so that we can farm enough to do uh, insulation. And that doesn't even take into account reed fibre. Oh god, we, we've still got that horrible cost of reed fibre going on. Oh man, maybe we should start mutating that now. They have definitely made insulation expensive. Very, very expensive. Anyway, I am going to cut that out here. I um, hope you enjoyed and good luck.